Now it's time to talk about the chain rule. And I'll motivate this by showing you an example that is uh, rather tedious to solve by the regular methods, but can be done very quickly and very accurately using this procedure that we know as the chain rule. Take a look at this function. y equals x squared plus 3x plus 1 squared. And we're told to find the derivative. And the thing to note here is that we have this thing, x squared plus 3x plus 1. You can think of that itself as a function. And that whole function is raised to a power. So you can think of this as a function within a function. Now you might think, ah, can't we just use the power rule? Let's take the, the exponent here, pop it out front, and reduce the exponent by 1. So we would get 2 times all of this to the power of 1. That won't quite work because this thing inside here is a function and not a simple variable. So according to the techniques we've learned so far, we would have to multiply this out. This would be uh, x squared plus 3x plus 1 times x squared plus 3x plus 1 and we can work all that out and our answer will be a big polynomial and we can just take the derivative term by term okay this won't take too long so let's let's uh let's do this to do this we have to multiply each of these three terms by each of these three terms and we get nine terms and uh, some of those terms will be able to be combined so we do this and we get uh, x to the fourth plus 3x cubed plus x squared plus 3x cubed plus 9x squared plus 3x plus x squared plus 3x plus 1. And let's simplify this. We've got our x to the fourth here. And then we have a 3x cubed here and here. So that's plus 6x cubed and then here's a x squared and a 9x squared and a x squared so that gives me plus 11x squared and then I have this 3x here and 3x here so that's a plus 6x and then I have that plus 1 at the end so this is just another way to write function y so now we can find y primed and we can just use the power rule on each of these terms so we get 4x cubed plus 18x squared plus 22x plus 6 and there we've got it not too bad okay but what if you had to do something like this what if you were given this problem instead of y equals x squared plus 3x plus 1 squared what if you had this y equals x squared plus 3x plus 1 to the power of 50. That would take a long time. That would take weeks or months, and one mistake would throw you completely off, and it would just be a horrendous number of tedious calculations. So that raises the question, isn't there a better method? And there is. And it, it relies on realizing that we have a function within a function. In this case down here we have the x squared plus 3x plus 1 and that whole function is raised to the power of 50. And this is what we call a composite function. It's made up of two functions and in calculus it's common to refer to these as inner and outer functions. If you're going to actually compute a value for y, if you're, you're given some number for x to plug in here, you do this in two steps. You stick a number in for x and you calculate this x squared plus 3x plus 1 and then you would raise that number to the power of 50 those are two distinct steps and we think of x squared plus 3x plus 1 as the inner function and x to the 50th taking something and raising it to the power of 50th to the power of 50 we think of that as the outer function in the notation of composite functions, which you um, typically cover in Algebra 2 or pre-calculus class, you would say this, f of x is equal to x to the power of 50, and g of x is equal to x squared plus 3x plus 1. And then y, my function y up here, can be written like this. y is f of g of x. And there's another notation for that. That same thing could be written as 
f compose g of x. And that's not an O right there. That's a little open circle which indicates function composition. The composition of functions f and g. One function within another. And I think the notation right here is a little bit more clear because it actually shows g literally inside function f which is what we have in this case. We have function g, the x squared plus 3x plus 1 inside function f which is x to the 50th. But this is a composite function and the chain rule is a technique for taking derivatives that applies to composite functions. And a lot of functions can be thought of this way. A lot of functions can be naturally split up into two or more functions. And it's very common to refer to them as the inner and outer functions according to how they're composed. So let's look real quick at some, some functions that can be split up into these inner and outer functions and then I'll show you how to take a derivative of those. Okay, here are a few functions, and this isn't too hard, and you've hopefully done something like this before in pre-calculus class, so we'll go through these fairly fast. Uh, y is equal to sine of 3x. Okay, f of x, I'll think of f as my outer function, is just the sine function, so f of x is sine x. And then my inner function here, I'll call that g, and you could name them anything, but calling f the outer and g the inner is fairly common. My inner function g is simply 3x. So y could be written as f of g of x. So f is the sine function, and y is f the sine of this, which is just 3x. So y is sine 3x. And it can be written as one function within another. You could also say y is f compose g. OK, and the next one y is 1 over x cubed plus x squared. I would think of f of x, my outer function, as the 1 over, and then my inner function, g of x, would be x cubed plus x squared. And if that's f and that's g, then y is f of g of x. And down here, uh, problem c here, Again, the inner function and outer function are pretty clear. My outer function, f of x, is something cubed. I'll write it as x cubed. And then my inner function, g of x, is what's inside here. x to the fifth plus x squared. And here's a few more. y equals the square root of 16x squared plus x. Okay, the outer function is the square root. So I'll say f of x is the square root of x. And my inner function, g of x, is what's inside that square root, 16x squared plus x. Now look at this next one, e. Cosine to the fifth of 4x squared plus 1. It might be easier to think of this y as cosine of 4x squared plus 1 all of that raised to the fifth. That's what this 5 means right here. This is the standard notation here. Although written this way it's pretty clear or easier to see what's the outer function. The outer function here isn't the cosine function. It's the raised to the power of 5. So I'm going to say f of x is x to the fifth. Now what's inside my raising to the power of 5? is the cosine of this. So my inner function is the cosine, and I'm going to say g of x is cosine x, and then what's in my cosine function is this. So I'm going to put a third function here, h of x is 4x squared plus 1. So there are three layers here. This is uh, f of g of x. If I wanted to rewrite y, I could say y is f of g, excuse me, f of g of h of x three layers deep. And the same thing happens here in uh, example f down here. Tangent to the fifth of pi x, pi x over 2. My outer function, f of x, is my raised to the power of 5. Oh, actually in the printed notes, if you're following along in the printed notes, that's a squared. Let me fix that. Tangent squared pi x over 2. And um, f of x is this, the squaring, x squared. Then g of x is what is squared, and that's my tangent of x. And then 
h of x is what's inside that, pi, pi x over 2. And when you write f, g, and h like that, then y is f of g of h of x. And sometimes you have them three layers deep or even more. Okay, now we'll see the next we'll see the chain rule which will show us a quick and easy way to take derivatives in situations like this where you have one function composed with another.